Mr. Happy Living here. I love entrepreneurs and authors and coaches and combat survivors and people from every walk of life that have discovered their reason for being on this planet. And that's why I love Jerry Barnes. He's a veteran and an author whose labor of love is writing about combat survivor heroes of the United States military. Jerry is a former senior executive of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers who met a persuasive 87-year-old literary agent just two years ago in 2018 that sparked a late-in-life, unexpected adventure, which has to date led to 60 stories, two published books, with many more proposals and ideas arriving in Jerry's inbox and his imagination literally every week. So, Jerry, welcome to the Something Significant Show, broadcasting from WYTV7 in the beautiful Queen City, Charlotte, North Carolina. Been there many times, passed through Charlotte, had relatives lived in Charlotte, so very familiar with the city. Uh, you are correct when you say that uh, I have found a new passion in life. Uh, this fellow looked at me, I was 72 years old, when he looked at me and he thought I was a young puck long young buck and said, uh, so what are you doing with your life? And I told him I was retired. And he said, retired? He says, uh, are you a veteran? I said, yes, sir, I am. And those four words have changed my life, Matt, to be honest with you. And I think you, you told me when, when he said that you were retired, you said something about tomatoes. You were spending lots of I was of raising tomatoes in my backyard. And they're still out there, but there's a few weeds in the garden now. I haven't had a chance to go out there and pull them off. But uh, I was just happy being retired. And yeah. when he asked me that question, I looked at my wife and said, what in the world is going on? And so I ended up writing three stories, one of which is my own, of a near-death survival. And finding, and Matt, this happened to me. I don't know how many other people it happened to. But I met a Green Beret uh, special ops guy who gave me a story, the first story I wrote called The Ambush. And it's in our first book here that I've got here. And when I took that book and, you know, the writing game was kind of not for the faint of heart because uh, I didn't know how to get a book published. Mm -hmm. So I went to a conference where there were publishers and writers and that kind of thing. And uh, I walked up to a kind lady. I talked to her last night, my publisher named Deb Haggerty, Elk Lake Publishing up in Massachusetts. And she looked up at me like she felt sorry for me. And she said, uh, what can I do for you? I says, well, ma'am, if you read this story that I've written and give me any idea if it's worthy of you considering to publish it. So she read The Ambush. Took her about five minutes, which is typical of the stories I write. You can read my stories in about three to five, six minutes. And when she finished reading that book, she looked up at me and she says, wow, that's quite a story. That's awesome. And so she said, uh, send me a proposal. I thought to myself, I didn't know what this game's all about. I thought you got literary agents and then you find publishers. But I'm talking to a publisher saying, send me a proposal. You can, yeah, so you, can make it, you can make it up as you go these days, Jerry. I guess you can, brother, because three weeks later, she sent me a contract. And she says, man, you got to go find a literary agent, but it won't be hard. You did it backwards. There so you I go. talked to her last night. She told me again, she says, I'll publish anything you write. That's awesome. Well, so let's, Let's get a little picture of your life for the audience. Let's go back in time. Let's say 10 years ago. What were you doing in 2010? In 2010, I'd retired from the Army Corps of Engineers. I was blessed to be in a, you know, a uniform three years in the Army Corps. And then the Army Corps hired me as a civil engineer. I, I've always done things a little bit harder in life, Matt. So I went to a voluntary Corps of Cadets to get an yeah. engineering degree. And so... I mean, just going through, it's like going through basic training for eight months. Trying to take uh, college to statics and dynamics. And so when I made it through the first year of that way, well, you, you make it through the first year of a military school and college, why well, anybody can make it through the last three. So I just stayed, got my degree in civil engineering, got my commission, and that began my life. So 10 years ago, I had retired from an absolutely wonderful career, been all over the world, and I was uh, hired by the World Bank. In fact, I was worked for the Secretary of the Army for five more years. They give you a year to cool off and bring you back. And uh, cooling off means so that's no impropriety of being hired back. 
-hmm. I came back and worked for the Secretary of the Army for five more years. He sent me to do all sorts of neat things. And then I finally, back in 2010, I was retiring from my second career. And I was looking for something to do. So I decided just to come home and raise tomatoes and do nothing. Go <laughs> cruises and that kind of stuff. And so that's when uh, I ran into this, uh, to this uh, literary agent, looked at me like, you're 72, why don't you make something of your life? There you I, go. Said, I thought I had done something. No, you can write some books. And well, that got me going. I want to tell you, I thank you for your service, and I'm really excited about your, your new service to the world, and we're going to get back to that. But uh, our show is called Sig Something Significant, and we define it in a little different terms. Significance contains four elements for us. So it's doing things you love, with people you love, in places you love, and creating something of value to others. So it's doing and it's giving. But to be a giver, you need to have excess capacity in your life. So the question I'd like you to share with the audience, your answer, what are your personal practices? What physical, spiritual, mental, financial, emotional, what do you do to increase your capacity, personal capacity, so you can take good care of yourself and still have something to give to others? So Matt, uh, I had picked up a lot of weight. I've lost 90 pounds. Okay. And uh, so that doesn't take a, a lot of work. Ha, huh. yes, it does. And so I've lost 90 pounds, but I enjoy working out on weights. So as soon as my wife and I didn't do anything easy, we had the virus. Okay. You did. And so I uh, got over the virus and there's a blessing of having this coronavirus. You have what are called antibodies. Yeah. And uh, I've always given blood. So now I go give uh, platelets and I've done it three times. That just, it's such a wonderful feeling to know that I'm giving from, basically a tough situation my wife and I both lived through. And I'm now giving back to help people save people's lives, for goodness sakes. Yeah. So that's before you ever got into the writing game. We do yeah. that. And then I just started writing these stories after I met Les Stobie. He's 90 years old. If I send him a, if I send him a text right now, he'll answer me. And uh, still encourages me and still is my biggest fan. And my publisher is my biggest fan. I talked to her last night. We talked for 45 minutes. And she says, Jerry, you just keep on doing what you're doing. And so I'll publish anything you write. So and what so, is so so you're you're lifting weights? Yes. What else are you doing for, for you? What about diet? What what do you do to stem? And you got all this energy. Where does it come from? What do you do? Well, doing? my wife and I try to go work out and spend time on a treadmill and and you know, losing weight's not easy. No. So I try to do that. And uh, once I uh can get back in the gym, I can do it much easier than I have been doing it. Yeah. But after that, uh, I just stay busy. Matt, I'm alert to opportunities. Uh, I've met some of my best stories in Wendy's. And in <laughs> walks a man in Wendy's with a Vietnam hat on. And I got talking to that character. And uh, he talked to me, started yeah. crying. And uh, I could tell it was a kindred spirit. I wrote his story. He was arrested when he was 17 years old, put in a jail in West Virginia. And when the judge looked at him, he says, you need to go in the Marine Corps years ago. And so Shane looked at me and he says, well, I'd like to go to the Marine Corps. I told the judge that. He says, well, you're too young. I can't release you without your father's permission. He gave him permission. And Shane says, I was at gone my way to Paris Island, 17 years old. Mm -hmm. He told me his story near death. And when I met him, such a wonderful man. That led me to his son. So I wrote a story about his son who fought in the Battle of Fallujah. Nasty stuff. And mm -hmm. survived it. And those two guys live in Farmville, Virginia. Just some of my dearest friends. I just sit down and listen. It's a pleasure to listen to both of them talk. Because yeah. they've had tough things in life and they've come through them. Yeah. And so that's one of the keys of life is do tough things. Give it your best. When you come through it, you're better because of it. Yeah, 100%. All right, Jerry. Well, we're at a good time to take a commercial break. So I want to take a minute to tell everyone about three things. A super amazing health device called Zona Plus, how to get a $50 discount, and how every purchase will support a big donation to WITV7. Mr. Happy Living here. I love good things made by good people. That's why I love 
Zona Plus, the world's first software-controlled handheld device that improves cardiovascular health. You're going to love it too. I use mine almost every day to keep my blood pressure right where it should be. What surprised me though is this little device has been adding muscle to my biceps too. I walk around all day feeling pumped. Check them out at Zona.com. Use coupon code HAPPY for $50 off. Plus, for every order placed during the month of October, I'll donate another $50 to WYTV7. Okay, we're back. And this is the Something Significant Show, and I'm Matt Gersper. Hey, friends, do yourself a big health favor and go buy a Zona Plus right after we finish this show. I love mine. Use it nearly every day. You're going to love yours, too. But now let's get back to my special guest, Jerry Barnes. He's dedicated to writing the stories of men and women who risked their lives to protect our freedom. So, Jerry, in my second book, Turning Inspiration into Action, I explore the big idea that transformations and discovery of purpose often come from devastation. Something terrible happens, an illness, a sudden death, something shakes a person's life and it makes a transformation. But I've used a happier way and created transformations in my life with inspiration. So my question for this segment is, has there been a specific moment or situation when either devastation or inspiration revealed to you the purpose you were meant to live? Take us to the moment. I can do it, Matt, and, and I truly can. I got to go way back. Okay. Uh, in 1963, no, November of 1963, my grandfather had a heart attack, and I was in I was in my rat year uh, in college, and so I got permission, rode the train down to Blackstone, Virginia. My dad picked me up, and I they, he took me to his bedside, and so I looked at my grandfather, and uh, I said. Uh, Papa says, uh, it's hard up in Blacksburg. I don't think I want to stay up there. Um, I says, I just want to come home and farm like you did. And he called me over to his bedside. And the only time I ever know I saw him cry, Mm -hmm. and the only time I really recall him kissing me, but he called me over to his bedside, leaned up, and hugged me around the neck with tears in his eyes. And he says, don't you quit. (laughs) You go back up there. I know it's hard, but life's hard. You go back up there, and you finish what you started. And so uh, he kissed me on the cheek, and he died that night. Mm. So I went back to Blacksburg, determined not to quit one day at a time. And that's how I made it through my rat year. And then uh, and when I made it through my rat year, I stayed, and I went to summer school, and I made three A's in summer school. And I realized that all the brain cells weren't gone, that I actually could graduate from Blacksburg with a degree in civil engineering. And so that was a ch- my first changing point in life was that. Yeah. And I went back up there determined not to quit. And you just not quit one day at a time. And you do your best one day at a time. And if you'll do that and not look back, just keep going, uh, it got easier. And when you get to your sophomore year, why anybody can do it in the sophomore year when you got all the tough stuff is out of the way. And so I learned that going to college was about putting in a little work and studying, my goodness. So I studied quite a bit, got my degree, and that's how I ended up with my education. Way to go, Grandpa. Yeah, right? he was the one that turned me around. Yeah, and so you, you mentioned something, you know, if you just keep going at it every day, you can create an upward spiral of goodness. And what I find really interesting, I've, I've always said, every day, every year can actually be better. And so far, knock on wood, it's been that way. And you're, you know, a couple, you're 10 or 15 years older than me, and you're still doing it. So just give us a minute on the idea that, I mean, I don't see that there's a time when you stop doing it. Is there an age you should stop trying to do more? And, and well, change? I thought it was about 72 when I was raising tomatoes, <laughs> but I found out that it's not. So my uh, purpose in life is to drag my wife. She's ready to be retired right now. Yeah. And uh, but she's following me around and says, what in the world is this man doing? He's 75 years old. He doesn't slow down. So Matt, I can see 
books three and four. In fact, right. people find once you start doing this writing thing and you on social media, people find me. I had a man find me that uh, lives up in Fredericksburg and he wanted to sit down and talk to me and turns out he's a pilot of a B-1B bomber and he had had a wonderful career in both the Marine Corps and the Air Force and asked me if I'd write his life story. Mm. I said, I don't know that I want to write a life story, but why don't we bring your life down, break it down into five or six stories? And that's yeah. what we've done. So book three will be called Stories from the Bone. And the B-1B called by the Air Force guys, The Bone. Big old okay. ugly thing, massive plane. And stuff happens up in the cockpit that nobody knows about. Right. And uh, he tell me those stories, like when you have a bird strike and two engines kept on fire in 12,000 gallons of fuel, and you're hoping it doesn't get to the fuel tank and blow you out of the sky. So that's one of the five stories in his book that I'm writing. I've got it recorded. So that's the third book, Stories of the Bone. And then so, the fourth book, be more stories. Okay, but before we leave this, this idea of when you discovered purpose and you're talking to grandpa and it changed your life for, for a work ethic, now here you are, 72 years of age, you're growing your tomatoes, and the, this older man comes by and tells you the four words, are you a veteran? And something happened. Something triggered inside Jerry Barnes to say, you know what? I've got more to do. So can you give us 30 seconds on what was it that changed that, that, that moment changed your outlook in life? Well, I looked at him and he looked at me and, and this man was... Uh... He was 15, 16 years older than I was. And here he was encouraging a younger man that thought he was old. <laughs> and right. so there was something about that dynamic. Yeah. That somebody speaking truth in your life that resonates with you if you're paying attention. And so that's what got me going, man. I just saw I got, you, and I started, written. my wife said, we're doing what? <laughs> I said, we're going to write books. What? You don't know how to write. You're an engineer. Well, I still don't know how to not write, but. Our, uh, my, our right, our right, Matt, but what I've learned is if you'll write, my publisher uh, is a big fan. The literary agent in Texas, she said, Jerry, I don't care if you spell, misspell the words. I don't care if the tenses are bad. I don't care. You just write what's in your head and we'll make it sound like a book. Yeah. Now, along the way, something is happening. I think my writing is getting a little better. <laughs> When you do it for 60 times, I think maybe it gets a little better. It does. My wife yells at me about how bad I write, and I'll work hard and make, try to make it a little better. And so I've just learned how to improve by putting forth the effort one story at a time. That's and it. And that's how we're doing it, brother. Awesome. So next, next section here, I want to talk about when you – we talked about capacity and purpose. And when you put capacity and purpose together and, and drive and the things you've been talking about – the sky's the limit. It's actually what I call the happy formula, capacity plus purpose equals happy. But if you recall my, my definition of significance, the fourth element of significance, I think, is what is the magic of life. So in your current work, writing these stories, tell the audience how doing work that creates value for others, because you're doing this not for you, you're, you're, you're doing it for them. How does doing work that creates value to others bring joy and magic into your life? How does it feel when you get those families reading those stories? Well, Matt, let me uh, introduce the new idea to you. Uh, Lauren, I figured that if you, if you do enough podcasts and you're talking to enough people and you speak enough, uh, you'll find people that are going to buy your books. And so it dawned on me that combat survivor stories are not like any other book. Mm -hmm. They never get old. Ten years from now, ten years from now, somebody's going to want to buy and read that book. Yeah. And ten years from now, somebody will want to read the second book and the stories of the bone and the fourth book. And so I just learned that I'm onto something that never grows old. Yeah. The other thing that happened and it's made all the difference in the world is when you sell books, you make a little money. You make yeah. a little money selling books. Well, I just told you, I don't even need the money. Yeah. I'm not wealthy, but I'm not poor. Lauren, I got enough. How many cruises can you take in life? And, well, we're going to take another one. Okay, that's about the fifth or sixth cruise. 
and we'll have a good time. Come on back home. But what I've learned is I ran into a lady who had created what is called an equine farm. Mm. What that means is that's a farm where she buys rescue animals, mostly horses, a few donkeys, uh, some of them bound for the slaughterhouse. And she uses those horses to rescue veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah, beautiful. It's the most wonderful thing. I can't tell you. Every time I go over there, I enjoy being there. You've got a picture of a horse. A horse is sitting in a in the slaughterhouse pen. Their their uh, hooves haven't been gr- clipped. They haven't been given a bath. They haven't been groomed. They're kind of droopy. In comes a veteran that's crying and yeah. suffering from PTSD. Sees that horse, and the veteran helps the horse improve. And something wonderful happens. The horse helps right. the veteran improve. So it's the that, most wonderful concept I've ever run into in my life. That's a picture right now of the joy and magic of doing for others. And your writing is leading to that. And that's, folks, if you're listening to this, that's when life really gets fun and happy and, and good. You're doing good work. Um, awesome, Jerry. So I want to take just a few minutes and we can peek inside your mind um, with a lightning round of questions. So I'm going to read one of my very favorite quotes, and then you'll have 30 to 45 seconds to respond what it means to you. Okay, so this is for for us to get to know Jerry. You think I've got a brain at 75 that I can answer these questions? Let's Uh see. Let's see. Let's see what you got. So from, from Helen Keller, security is mostly a superstition. It doesn't exist in nature. I think security is in your ability to perform and when you perform, to give to somebody else. That's where your security is. It's certainly not in feeling sorry for yourself. Security is in your ability to make a difference, regardless of where your age is in life, make a difference to help somebody else. That's when you find security and find purpose in your life. Yeah, right on. Okay, from Hemingway, it's good to have an end to journey toward but it's the journey that matters in the end. Matt, uh, anything can be done one step at a time. The book publishing game, I thought was a snap. And for me, it was. (laughs) But the book selling game is quite another challenge. Yeah. And what you have to do is you have to talk to enough people, talk to enough podcasters, talk to enough, speak when the virus is over. I can do some more speaking. Literally, every time I go somewhere to speak, gun and rifle clubs, uh, retirement homes, I'll I'll sell six or eight books. You're not going to get rich selling six or eight books. But what happens is somebody walks up to me literally in every one of those events and says, well, I can give you my story. I don't know whether you want to write it. Mm -hmm. And somebody will say that and I'll say, well, yeah, I probably do want to hear it. And so in listening to those other people tell their stories, I give back. They feel a sense of purpose. Let me just share this with you. And maybe I'll run over. You just yell at me if I run over. All right. I met one of my best friends in high school that served in Vietnam and was in a nasty, nasty combat situation. He He was so traumatized. He hadn't told his story in 50 years. I saw them at church, oh, about a year ago. And Gloria's wife's in bad health. She came up to me and she said, Jerry, I'm trying to get Douglas to give you his story. So she brought Douglas over and she said, Douglas, she was she had tears in her eyes. She says, Douglas, you've got to tell Jerry your story. I don't want to talk my story, Gloria. And then she said these words, Douglas, don't you think our children and grandchildren and babies need to know what Papa did in the war? Mm-hmm. And something happened at that moment. His mouth opened and the words came pouring out. So I sat down, got his story, and his story will be in book two, Angels on the Battlefield. Fantastic man. And uh, he got the story out of him, and it like it freed him a little bit. Right. And so he was able to tell the story, and we were able to make something out of it. I love it. Okay, I'm going to give you one more quote. This might be my, I think, the most powerful one for my life. Whatever it's from Goff, whatever you can do or dream you can do, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Begin it now. 
Um, Matt, I'm going to go back to one of the stories I wrote, and every time I think about it, I may start crying telling you this story. But uh, I have a friend who's a retired two-star in Special Operations Command out of Fort Bragg. Ken Bowers is his name. Ken introduced me to a couple in McLean, Virginia, Harry and Sally, and just a sweet couple from Cambodia. Well, what Harry and Sally lived through was the killing fields of Cambodia, mm. where two million Cambodians were killed by nutcakes that drove people out of the city of Phnom Penh into the jungle for three years. So Shute, the mother, the patriarch of that family, had the presence of mind. They ran a little jewelry store. And when the nutcakes came to get them on the end of a rifle to drive them out of the house, she put some gold in a little bag and put it on the inside of her garter in her skirt and took it with them. And she traded gold for over three years, almost going on to four years, to get enough money to feed her family uh, in the jungles of Cambodia wow. to give her family released. And so they lost her husband, lost grandma and grandpa, but Chute and Harry and Sally lived through this combat. They did something very hard by presence of mind, giving back. And now when, when I go hear Sally's story, she thinks of her mother, Chute, trading gold to keep them alive, and she'll start crying. But I wrote their story down, and that's in the second book. It's the most uh, powerful story I think of all of my written with the exception, maybe, of how I end the book from uh, Marvin Young. So if you'll ask me a question, I'll end this interview by telling you about Marvin Young. Well, this is the end of the interview. So you've got a minute or two for your parting remarks. Any remarks you want to share with the audience? I'm ending up the book, uh, Angels on the Battlefield, by a, a fellow who went ashore at D-Day in the second wave named Marvin Young. He says, as they were approaching D-Day, Normandy Beach, he'd seen Saving Private Ryan. D-Day was three times worse than that opening scene of Saving Private Ryan. Mm. And they lived through it. He did all sorts of things, had some near-death experiences, was wounded four times. And from his bed in England, was begging after the Battle of the Bulge, been wounded four times, send me back. Right. Please send me back. Unbelievable. I can't imagine, I mean, it's hard to imagine what those young men did that day. Uh, just, I cannot conceive. Oh my of, God. Yeah. I, I just can't conceive of what they lived through. Well, thank you so much for what you're doing. Um, unfortunately, we've got to bring this thing to a close. Um, so now folks, if you can hear my voice and you were inspired by today's show, as I was uh, with author and patriot, Jerry Barnes, Please donate what you can to WITV7. They're a 501c3 charity on a mission to educate, empower, and encourage. And they do good works with your kindness. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, you are a joy and an inspiration to everyone who may think it's too late to begin something new. Never too late. And you must feel like an angel to the families of the men and women you write about in your stories by reminding them, celebrating their heroic acts and sacrifices, and reminding all of us that freedom isn't free. No. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you to WITV7 for hosting and promoting our show so we can keep reaching ordinary people ready to create extraordinary lives. A special thank you to our sponsors for the entire month of October, Zona Plus and Happy Living. Remember, the more you buy, the more I'll donate. So tell your friends to buy a Zona Plus too. It's good for their health. And most especially, thank you viewers and listeners. You'll find links to websites and social media and all things Jerry Barnes. Find him, friend, friend him, buy his books. Check out the cool stuff he's doing as he talked about helping veterans with PSD through equestrian therapy. Very cool stuff. From me to you, dear friends, I love you and I want you to be happy. We do what we do on the Something Significant show to inspire you to live your life to its fullest, to believe as I do that a better self is always possible today and every day for the rest of our lives. Be bold. If you're dreaming about it, then get on with it for it's on that special path, the one to your dream.
your unique and distinctive journey. That's where you'll discover how to make your mark of significance on the world. Till next time, I'm Matt Gersper. You are awesome. And this is the Something Significant Show. And we're out here.